Hi everyone, I'm apologising, I've been trying to make this bloody video for days. I've actually, this is about take, <coughs> take six I think, at making this particular card. Um, the reason I'm doing it again is not because it keeps going wrong, it hasn't gone wrong at all. It's just that, um, sorry, it's a bit, um, there we go, sorry, the camera's a bit soft focus then. Um, I've actually tried multiple different ways of doing this and I just haven't been happy with the results so I'm starting over and what I'm actually making is a card for a friend that will make no sense whatsoever but it uses a layering stamp set and I'm making this in quite an unusual kind of way I'm doing sort of different media and all sorts of stuff so let me get my paper trimmer ready because we're going to need that and the stamp set that I'm basing this on if I've still got the packaging around because the actual stamp set is kind of um, open and and in use but it's one of the Hero Arts layering sets and when it when I find where I've put it in amongst all my bits and pieces because I don't know if you realize this but when I film these videos I'm actually filming you know three or four different um, videos at the same time so I'm not just doing one I'm doing loads of videos at once and that's why it always looks terribly disorganized but actually i know exactly what i'm doing honestly so i'm just kind of getting rid of some of the pieces from my previous card and anyway i've been trying to make this for ages i really struggled to get hold of this stamp set i got it in the end from seven hills crafts in the uk who are brilliant they're really swift delivery they were lovely. The lady behind it is so helpful, and I was really pleased with with that. That that was really nice service with them. So I was pleased, and I've tried this stamp set out so many times. My original plan didn't work. My original design didn't work. Uh, I just didn't like it, and I tried different versions. But um, I've kind of got something now that I like. And I've made it, and that might be another video, but I came up with another idea that I really want to do, so we're going to do that. And to do that, I'm going to have to make a back panel for this card, first of all. So it's this goldfish layering set from Hero Arts. You may have seen these goldfish stamps, and the set looks like this, with these layering goldfish. And I love these layering sets from Hero Arts. I think they're really innovative and quite good fun to put together, actually. Now, the set that I'm, or the, or the thing that I'm putting together is a kind of a mixed media card. It's, it's not a kind of nice little um, clean and simple card. This is a complicated card. What's the opposite of clean and simple? Nightmare card. Um, I'll show you what the actual fish look like when they're stamped. Because I've done a few different variations on them. Um... With different colours but essentially they look if you do them just in two colours you get that kind of look and if you do the kind of lower layer you get that kind of look and there's two sizes in the set and I'm going to be stamping those onto acetate today so we're going to make kind of like a windowy sort of card but I want to make a background and I was watching a video by Julia Alterman and she pointed out that distress blending works better on watercolour paper so I've got some cheap um, Aquafine smooth watercolour paper which is a hot press paper 300 GSM 140 pound really nice paper and I've never used this with distress inks but it's a really 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 robust um, paper and I'm going to use this sheet of this to put together my card so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a panel and I'm going to cut it this is going to be a six by six card overall so I'm going to cut a six by six panel and I use this Cricut um, paper trimmer which I think is great it's really cheap I'll put it in the video description Oh, cheap for what it is, and I've managed to buy it in a big box craft store. I didn't have to do like any complicated stuff online. I know people like the Fiskars one with the wiry thing, but I think this is not too dissimilar to to that. So for me, it's perfect, and I'm just cutting down to make a six inch by six inch panel, and I've got this spare piece I can use for testing. So there's my panel, and I'm going to use. I was originally going to do a blending, but I'm actually going to do a smushing of Distress Ink 
and put this into it and then I'm going to let it dry which is why we have to do it first because obviously we want it to to dry down now I'm not going to just do straight blues because that's going to be awfully dull this is going to be the sea with some light coming through it so I want to have a few different colors and I want dark at the bottom light at the top obviously so I'm going to start with this area of my craft sheet and I'm going to put down some chipped sapphire at the bottom and we'll we'll build up and we'll add other colors as we go i'm now going to add in salty ocean which is obviously a very marine color and i'm kind of blobbing that along just to add some texture i'm just going to add some blueprint sketch not too much of it because when we do smushing of course we kind of use the inks in the order that they end up on on the page i'm adding some broken china just to kind of make this area big enough and a bit of tumbled glass near the top because like I said it's going to be lighter towards the top and a bit of mermaid lagoon as well because that's always a lovely marine colour and I want to just add into that a little bit of um, twisted citron just down one side and a little bit of squeezed lemonade at the top on the other side because that'll help me with my light coming through the image kind of effect that I want. Now I've got to wet that because this won't work unless you get it really wet. And I'm not just going to spray it with water. I've got water into which I've added um, the green patina perfect pearls from Ranger. And you get this lovely green swirly water. And that's got a resiny kind of thing in it which actually works quite well with the paint. So you have to spray enough on that all of your ink fully beads up on the surface like I have now and I'm going to take my sheet of paper and I'm going to put it straight on and I'm going to smush it down and I'm just going to lift it up and see if I've got full coverage and it's not far off now it will slip and slide it won't give you immediate like absorbance because it's sized paper obviously it's watercolor paper if I was doing this with cartridge paper this would just soak up the liquid so I'm going to leave it there a little while and let it soak it up. And the trick with this, and I've seen Christina Werner do wonderful things with this technique, is that you get a very light background and then what you do is you do another layer when it's starting to dry down. She heat sets hers. Um, I don't like to do that because I want it to um, kind of make its own patterns and then we'll worry about how to get it to make another layer later. So here's my preliminary light at the top dark at the bottom with some interesting colors in there and I've got to let that dry down now so I'm going to pop that over to one side and let it dry but I'm not going to waste what's here because I can make a gift tag using that little piece there now all the colors have kind of run together now and we've got a kind of a swirly patina y blue here so we'll just dunk the whole thing get it as wet as we can get it and then I'll just let that dry and I'll be able to use it. And I did one earlier, a practice one. Oops. I did a practice one earlier and got that. So it's not very dark in colour. And one of the tricks I've learned with this technique is you need to put down far more ink than you think you're going to need uh, if you want to get a really vivid colour. I'm just drying that up with a baby wipe that's dried out, like an old baby wipe. And then I'm going to use a new baby wipe to clear off that ink because Distress Ink has got a habit of getting onto your project where you don't want it. So now I need a sheet of acetate onto which I'm actually going to do my stamping. I'm going to use a heat resistant, oops, sorry, just whack the camera there. I've got a heat resistant acetate um, out that I bought specifically for this project. And I've got a sheet of it here. It's not very sturdy, but um, it is heat resistant, and that's the main thing. So I'm going to cut from this a 6x6 six six piece, because that's going to be the front of the card. And I'm actually going to cut it 6x7, six because I want enough that I can fold over... Um, no, the back's going to fold over the front, sorry. So it's going to be a 6x6 six six panel. And I'll just cut that, and you can cut that with your paper trimmer. You don't need anything fancy to to cut acetate. Um, as long as it's this kind of thin card maker's sort of acetate, and not the um, 
the really thick packaging acetate so it cuts really simply and I find this again quite economical you can get packs of many sheets for not an enormous amount of money now because of the way that the cookie has crumbled I've got an actually an odd size piece here and I'll just show it to you but we haven't got to worry about it because we can rectify it so my 6x6 has got a corner missing I don't know if you can see that that will be covered over so that's going to be the left hand side now we're going to do some heat embossing on this and a lot of people think you can't heat emboss on acetate but you can you need to use anti-static powder as people call it it's not actually anti-static at all it's anti-grease and anti-moisture it's just cornstarch or talcum powder or baby powder you can use any of those you don't need one of these little pouches that you buy on the internet that I've got. You don't need those um, anti-static powder tools that people use that are like the brush things. You can just fill a muslin bag with cornstarch. And you need to apply it fairly generously um, when you're working with acetate because acetate is so prone to fingerprints. Now, I'm going to be heat embossing twice. I'm going to be doing it first in Wendy Vecchi Buttercup. That's going to be like the background of the fish. And then I'm going to go over it with her wonderful orange, which is called Orange Blossom. And that's going to give me my um, my colours. And then I might do the faces um, of the fish in black or something else. So I'm going to stamp these because I've got to get the bodies and the everything else also perfectly lined up over each other I might need to use my little um, I would normally use my sort of knockoff misty kind of tool but I'm not going to need that today because I'm going to do this with blocks and I don't know how it's going to go doing it with blocks because I haven't tried to do this set with blocks before so that could that could be interesting and I'm going to be stamping with Versamark which is the the clear embossing ink that we all know and love. So I'm going to mount these onto blocks. Um, there's a little block here that's perfect for the little fish. So he's nice and safe. And I'll see if I can find one for the bigger fish. I'm also going to stamp the weeds from this set. And I'm going to put them in green um, embossing powder. But they will come later. Uh, I've got the weeds already mounted on a block actually. Because I've already stamped them. In my practice piece where I worked out the composition because I do that um, I think that's pretty common actually when you when you watch these kinds of videos most people have done a dry run to make sure it worked most people have have actually planned it out so whilst it may look chaotic because um, what you see looks really messy the reason I don't tidy my desk and I get comments tidy your desk you look so disorganized sorry I couldn't give a fuck whether you think I look disorganised or not. It's my desk. If I want to look disorganised, I will. I'm not disorganised. I know exactly what I'm doing. Thank you. If you want your desk to be spotless, you tidy it. But I don't care. So my desk looks like how I want my desk to look. So I've got these on here and on my blocks. And if you do find that when you've been handling anti-static powder, you can't get your stamps to cling quite properly to the blocks, it's usually because you've got a bit on there. So just baby wipe and baby wipe the back of the stamp and the moisture will usually be enough to kind of reactivate the the static that, that holds them on there um, which the powder does kind of get in the way of so I'm going to stamp these in with Versamark now and I've got a new Versamark pad that I've only just opened which is always a thrill because it hasn't got like black crap all over it So the good thing with Versamark is you get a bit of open time with it. And I want these fish near the middle, really. And I'm stamping straight onto a craft sheet here, so I haven't got a um, soft pad underneath, which always gives a better stamp. So I would recommend, if you're doing this at home, that you put a piece of fun foam under just to help you um, align getting these stamped really crisply because that bit of pressure 
does really really help so I've got my first layer down and I'm now going to add embossing powder and the way I like to do this a lot of people use a sheet of paper I actually use another sheet of acetate um, this is just overhead transparency acetate the really cheap stuff and I like that because it's easier for cleanup for me I find it easier to bend it and get it into um, shape so I'm now throwing on the embossing powder it's a lovely powder because all of Wendy's powders are super fine, which I think is a real advantage of them. It makes them have an unusual kind of flowery texture, actually, if you're not used to working with super fine powders. Now, I've learned some tips for getting good images when you're working on acetate with embossing. So I'll share those with you. One of them is to get your heat tool really hot. And if you've got the cheap pink sex toy looking heat tool that I've got, you know the one I mean, um, it's not very good so you might need to like get it really heated up before you use it whereas if you're using a really good one you won't need to worry. Now the first thing to do is check you haven't got powder where you don't want it and if you have these cut horsehair stencil brushes are really good for just pushing off the powder and they're fine. If you do that after you heat set you're going to have to put your um, you're going to have to put more powder, more more, more anti-static powder on before you do the next layer. So I'm not going to actually show you the heat embossing of all the layers. I'm just going to do this top layer. Then I'm going to do the rest of the other layer of the fish and then the green reedy things using these weeds from the same stamp set. And then I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished. So I'm just going to heat up. This is the sex toy heat tool, by the way, just so you know which one I mean. It's just that pink that sex toys in the early 2000s tended to be. Allegedly, um, not that I'd know. So when you heat acetate, you always heat gently. And you keep it moving. Gently and keep it moving. And once the powder starts to turn, get it off quickly. So as soon as the powder starts to turn, and you get that beautiful embossed effect from the back it looks just gorgeous and you could stamp these upside down you could do the upper layer first and then this and then view them from the other side and that would look really cool as well um, if you wanted to make them so and then you could what you could do is if you did that you could do embossing paste on the other side and oh you could have layer. I should have done that bugger never mind so as soon as they have cooled down enough I recommend once they've set you go over them again with powder tool because we don't want you know you've gone to this effort you don't want problems to start emerging at this stage so I'm going to turn the camera off do the other layers and I'll show you what right I'm back and I actually proceeded a little bit further than I originally intended um, with this card so last night I'd started this background which I've now finished and I was stamping these goldfish which I stamped in yellow embossing powder which was Wendy Becky Buttercup from Ranger. I then did the next layer of the stamp set in Wendy Becky again Orange Blossom which is quite a nice muted orange and then I did the detail with Wendy Becky's red geranium um she does have multiple reds and oranges actually so there's a choice and i think there's two yellows now as well and what this left me with i mean this fish i'm quite pleased with I mean, the reds come out a bit weird but you know hey ho um this one had a little bit of a mistake there i did think if i was going to do this again i would probably do the dark bits first then the orange bit and then the yellow and turn it turn it over because it actually looks quite cool through the plastic now the plastic is covered in embossing um, powder, not embossing powder, uh, anti-crap powder that we put on beforehand and a few bits of stray embossing powder so we need to clean the plastic but it's done and I also added just this little row of bubbles which haven't quite dried yet and I added those using, um, the reason I didn't film it was just that it takes longer when I do it for filming and I was in a hurry so I just um, did it without filming those bits so I took this Tim Holtz um, bubbles I think it is stencils called yeah I'm fairly certain this one's called bubbles and I um, I just taped off an area to mask it, flipped it over and applied Ranger Transparent Gloss Embossing Paste 
texture paste, whatever they want to call it, through it. Um, and you know, it works. It's an easy way to do that. While that was then drying, I took my watercolour paper, which had by then dried, and I just took my blending tool and I just tidied up the ink blending. So I added a little bit more yellow up here, a little bit more bl darker blue here, and so on. And then I stamped in these weeds. Now, on the front, I stamped the same weeds here in Versamark, and then I embossed them with fern green from Wendy Becky's range at Ranger and that gives a lovely gloss wonderful effect. I kept those stamps on the block in this position so there's one two three and they're kind of set so that they look kind of pseudo random if you stamp them in a row. I kept them where they were and stamped them in the same position on the background. First of all in um Ranger Archival Sap Green because that won't interfere with the Distress Ink and then again in Leaf Green again from Wendy Vecchi. So I've got the same colour in both embossing um, powder and ink so that there's a, a continuity of the embossing powder and then the ink here and the embossing powder here and then you've got the other green kind of as a sort of distance um, effect. I then added embossing paste to add rays from the sun using, I think it might even be called something like Sunray, this one from Tim Holtz. And I just simply put that on as I think you can pretty much tell how I did that. Taped it down, ran through with Ranger opaque white um, matte texture paste. And then when it was still wet, I sprinkled it with Wendy Vecchi embossing powder in um, Buttercup. And now it's dry, that embossing powder is a little bit loose. So I'm just going to tidy up and make sure there isn't too much loose embossing powder on the surface of this work. The embossing paste will grab embossing powder when it's still wet but it will release it again when it's dry so some people like to do the actual heating step whilst it's still fairly wet now i don't do that because it has a tendency to bubble and i think that, that then looks crap but what i'm going to do is heat set this and then i'll show you a trick if you've got patchy bits for filling them in so i'll just plug in my heat tool I was going to say as well, I haven't done a video for a little while and people are probably thinking, why hasn't he done a video? The answer is I've just been really busy and I've actually filmed loads of videos, but I just don't like the quality of them. I just didn't think they were any good. So I've, I'm being a perfectionist. Um, I haven't put them live. So just heating this up. Because we're using over the top of embossing paste, I think you have to have the tool pretty hot. And this is obviously a relatively slow, boring step that I would normally do off camera. Okay, so that's pretty easy, and once it starts to cool, which is pretty quick, these don't take too long to cool down, I'm going to go in and touch it up a little bit using a Versa marker, which is an embossing ink pen. And you have to be very careful with the Versa marker because it's not the same formulation as Versamark. Very important to note that. The big difference is Versamark is basically glycerine with a few resiny things that have been added to it um oh, by the way if you do get embossing powder and stuff on your stamps just wash them 
water and soap will get rid of all of it. Absolutely fine. Um, the Versa marker, the, so the Versa marker is a kind of glycerine, very sticky. Versa marker is more fluid. It's really glycerine mixed with rubbing alcohol. So it smells of isopropanol. This is the Versa marker. You must store it flat. Don't store it on one end, otherwise it goes blobby. And I'm going to use the broad tip and I'm going to use it now to touch this up. My word of warning is that if you're using an embossing powder, not so much like these ones, but if you've got embossing powders that look a bit more like this, that are like a mixture of different particles, this one's got holographic mixed with orange mixed with yellow, so you've got that sparkliness, what will often happen is the Versa marker won't um, adhere the heavier particles like the holographic bits, so you'll end up getting a patchy result there. So all you need to do is colour in the bits that you think need a bit more. You could just sort of slam down Versamark pad through the stencil again if you wanted to, but I find that this method pretty much always works. So I'll put down my piece of scrap acetate there. You do have to work a little bit quicker with the Versamarker than you do with um, Versamark ink because it's alcohol based. And once the alcohol dries down, you lose some of the very limited grip that it has. It really is best with ultra-fine powders. Um, all of Wendy Becky's powders are ultra-fine, so that's okay. But if you don't have those and you have a heavier powder, it won't work with UT, i.e. ultra-thick embossing enamel. It just won't grip it. It hasn't got the power to do that. So um, be warned. Sorry, I forgot how off camera I get when I do this. Now, now this won't make much sense to you as to why there's rays of sun in the ocean, but the sentiment that I'm going to be adding, which is very particular to a friend of mine, it will make sense. Um, I'm thinking about putting in a piece of wood with the sentiment on it, um, uh, like a, a wood grain effect. So I, I might um, use an embossing folder, maybe, potentially, to do that. I might just stamp it um, on a sort of piece of card that I've die-cut, and then I'll re-stamp these um, weeds in front of it. So now we've got to look at how we're going to assemble it, and essentially it's going to go together something like this. We can always trim the edges if it doesn't perfectly match, and it probably won't because I didn't cut it absolutely perfectly in the first place. But we've got to mount it together in a way that hides that and covers up that joint. So I'm going to put it back on there, and that back is a really simple one. I've got some card bases that are pre-cut, so I'll just get one and I'll come back. Okay, <sighs> took a bit longer to find than I thought. I've got this card base that is pre-scored, pre-cut card base that is six inches by I think four inches and I'm going to cut it down on the front to make it just one inch because then it will cover up the join perfectly. So I'll put that into my paper trimmer which I'm just going to do here and first of all find where the score is and I'm just going to move it along so the score line is offset by a half inch. I was going to do an inch, but I think a half inch will work. And I've still got that piece of card, and I can make use of that for another project. Now, that doesn't leave me a lot of overlap to attach the acetate, which is a slight concern, but I'm sure I can cope. And that will get stuck in like that. And then I'll need to trim off the top and make good all the kind of joins. Now the acetate when you do these pieces of work gets fingerprints and shit all over it, not literally, and so you'll need to clean it. Just when you get to a point where you're not going to need to add or stick anything, just get a baby wipe, just baby wipe it and it will be fine. And if you can see, I don't know if you can see, the joys are filming in HD, 
Um, if you can see the surface of my craft sheet, you'll see why I can't be trusted with embossing powders. Because I am so irresponsible with them. So, I'm just going to line that up into the join of the card. And rub off all traces of adhesive. So we've got that there and that's inside and then this piece will go in and that will be glued into position there and then that will form a fold and I could, should I wish to, I could add a piece of this card to finish off the back and then I'll just stick something over it to um, to tidy up and finish. So that's what I think I'm going to do. So I need to cut this off at exactly 50%. Currently three and a half inches, and I need it to be two inches. So I quite like buying pre cut card um, bases, even if I don't necessarily always use them, just because it makes it a bit easier to deal with making acetate cards or other cards where you just want something that will fit so I can stick that together like that and as long as I put a back on it it's, no one's ever gonna know well they will because a bloody obvious join but it'll be fine so I'm going to tamp the whole thing down and then I'm going to put this card panel onto the inside with that being watercolor paper it is a little bit heavier than if it was just a piece of card. Um, you don't have to use hot press watercolour paper for this, you could equally use cold press. I wanted to use hot press because I wanted that sort of smooth effect. I could have used Bristol board. I mean, watercolour on Bristol board doesn't always sit very well, but actually, if you use an Eastern watercolour, it would, and Distress Ink isn't too bad on it. Distress ink actually looks really nice on Bristol board. It just it's a bit wasteful of ink. It gets through rather a lot of it. So I've stuck that down and now I'm going to stick down the extra piece that we cut. One thing I hate about tape runners is that they, if you work too fast, you pick up the glue you've already stuck down and they're getting a mess. I hate them. Okay, so I've just got to trim off the top of this, both the acetate layer and the car and the paper layer don't quite match up with the top of the blue, so I'm going to trim that. I bet the battery's going to run out now, but we'll be brave. Again, the nice thing, if you are buying a paper trimmer, buy one aimed at scrapbookers because they're exactly 12 inches, and that helps a lot. Plus everyone knows 12 inches is the perfect size for everything. You might find when you're cutting through watercolour paper that you need to run a paper, these kinds of paper trimmer back and forth a couple of times. You could just take a pair of long handled scissors, long bladed scissors and cut through. The fact that it's got embossing paste on it does make it hard to cut but I find if you just take the piece with the paste on and work it a little bit back and forth really gently you can get it off once you've got it off I recommend taking a sanding block and just tidying up that top edge and I'm going to tidy up the outside edge on this card and then I'm going to do a little bit of inking possibly no I'm not I'm going to stick on a couple of sequins really quickly and then I'll finish this off so I've got some glossy accents from Ranger, which is, as well as being a nice glossy finish, is a pretty good adhesive for all things small. And I've got these sequins from Craft Factory, which are just um, five, five millimeter cup sequins in clear, which are actually holographic. And it was five grams for about one pound in Hobbycraft. 
realised that they were really nice and perfect for this kind of underwater sort of effect. So I thought they'd also be cool for a shaker card as well. So I'll just take out a small number because I can't be trusted with anything like sequins, seed beads, <laughs> embossing powders, um, well anything really. Um, I'm horrendously messy, I drop things a lot, really clumsy. My forceps. And Glossy Accents is wonderful because it has that nice lovely tip there. And I'm just going to apply a couple of drops of it where I think these fish would probably have blown a few bubbles. Those bubbles I added previously have not quite cured yet, so they might need a bit longer. And I'm just going to apply, when you're applying cup sequins, you always apply them so the cup side, like the, they are concave to look at. Otherwise they're really hard to get to stay down. And even with clear sequins, glossy accents isn't that conspicuous. Some people like to use a matte, a matte medium, um, Ranger multi-medium or multi-medium matte. Or, sorry, let me get that right. Ranger multi-medium in matte. Matte is not the name, it's the, cons the consistency. <laughs>